Hello everybody, this is Blade55555 and today I'm presenting to you a video on how to handle English as, Abbasid, uh, as the Abbasid civilization. This is going to be a very basic video on dealing with pressure and a couple of ways you can deal with it. Um, the One of the easiest ways to probably deal with the pressure is to go for a one town center delayed to TC um, and using light cav or a horseman and archers to defend but in this one I'm showing a method with two town centers. This can be a difficult way to defend against the rush because you need to be precise with your building placement. Um, your second TC needs to be put into a good spot. Usually you want it to be in range of the TC of the your main town center to a degree so that longbows can't just take it out. Um, and as well as there's one and very important factor, and that is an outpost or a, a tower. Oh, yeah, an outpost. I was right. Anyway, this outpost is very, very important and key to your survival if going to town centers. Uh, and to do this, it's going to take you a few times to realize what you need to do. Um, it's taken me a while before I finally figured out kind of a good spot. So like on this map, for example, we're going to see we have our wood line here, our deer here. We have a backward stone, berries, so this is pretty safe from aggression, and then we have a gold right here. When placing a tower, you want to put it to where it can defend your most important resources, and you're going to upgrade the arrow slits with the tower. Um, so, where, what I'm going to end up doing this game, because uh, as we can see the map layout, it's actually pretty easily defensive, uh, defensible, is you can put a wall here, which you will see me do, and then we're going to end up putting our outpost right about here. And uh, we're going to upgrade it with arrow slits. And what this does, this pretty much shut down any aggression to your gold and to, even to your wood line right here. The wall here um, obviously further protects this wood line. And then you can even go further and wall here a little bit so that he has to go all the way around to attack you. Um, this can work even on more wide open maps. Unfortunately, I only I don't play against English very much whenever I pick Abbasid, so this is one of the only ones I could. I actually this is the only one I have in my recent games that I can showcase. Uh, if it's a more open map, you want to be again you just want to you want to protect your most important resources, which is usually going to be your wood line and potentially your food, and then from there. Once you get your second town center going and you're pumping out units or villagers, uh, you're going to go into three archery ranges, and the three archery ranges um, are going to you're going to actually outproduce the English longbows eventually to where you can just take them out. Um, the the nice benefit to our archers instead of longbows is they're faster, so it's a lot harder for English to retreat. Whereas with our archers we can retreat or attack much easier. Of course the English longbows are stronger so you do have to take that into account and one thing you want to do is be patient. You do not want to engage too soon if you can avoid it. Um, so with this game as you can see we're just kind of we opened up two uh, two scouts. I do this pretty much every time. It's just so useful in getting sheep. As you can see we got seven sheep which is pretty good, something, you know, it's a decent number. You, it's definitely better than if you get two because you are only three or four if you use one scout and get unlucky. Uh, sheep uh, can be very random on every map on whether you get it or not. Um, and the general basics of the build order is seven food, three gold. Uh, you're going to rally to wood. Once you start advancing, you're going to take two villagers off of food so that you have five on food put them to wood. Once you get about six on wood, you're going to rally a couple to stone. And then once you get about a hundred and I believe it's 150 gold, might be 160. Uh, you're going to transfer these three villagers to stone. Um, and the reason why you want that extra gold is because you want to get the fresh foodstuffs, which makes your villagers cheaper. Um, but you need that extra gold because as you can see, this is 125, so that you can get the arrow slits upgrade uh, with the tower. It's a very important part of this build. You cannot skip the tower. Uh, and you're going to build the tower before you build your second town center. 
Um, and to give you further perspective, my opponent hasn't aged up yet at 448. This tower would have gone up much sooner if my opponent had aged up. Uh, let's say he did a four minute age up. I would have had this tower going up probably the moment I saw him hit age two. And I would have used multiple villagers. Because um, again, you need to get this up. Otherwise, you're giving the English player free reign to hit your villagers on your wood line. And the tower is being placed here because with the arrow slits upgrade, it will hit units here and it protects your gold line. And that way the player, uh, the English player can't longbow rush, move forward, snipe a villager and then run away while you try to garrison. You shouldn't have to garrison. Of course, if he tries to run past it, eh, then all you just need to do is just be watchful of it, which you should have plenty of vision with the outpost. As you're going to see here, we have seven on stone. We have our tower down. Um, the second TC is going to be later, almost no matter what. That's just something you have to accept. Uh, you know, probably six minutes. You can actually shorten it by if you put villagers on stone a little earlier. Um, but it wouldn't shorten it too much. And as you're going to see, we're, we're close to getting that second town center. Um, and then we have arrow slits coming in, which again is 25 gold, 50 stone which is also what delays your town center a bit, right? And we, gather, we had to gather 350 stone to get the town center, not 50. And I put the second town center here because I wanted it to protect, again, this wood line if he does decide to harass this way. Um, I wouldn't have been, I would have actually been fine if I'd put it here um, as it would still provide protection uh, to this wood line and you would have secured your berries if he decides to harass from here. Uh, again, it's just kind of a, what you think is more important. Um, in this game, I want to secure this wood line as well and this these hunts. And then with this arrow slits upgrade, as you can see with the dots, is it secures this whole area. You can't walk. There's no way he can walk around without taking fire uh, by the outpost. And then here he does do some pressure. Uh, this is kind of a weakness where I unfortunately put my villagers in a or I put my town center a little too far away. I should have probably put it a little closer. Um, and so I lost, I think it was two villagers to that. But we have two TCs producing, so it's uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it's it's not. If I was to lose this game, I wouldn't call this the moment because uh, the reason I lost. And then as you can see, we're kind of just gathering wood. And now we're going to start putting down our archery ranges. Uh, we're going to put three down. And we're just going to be very defensive. Uh, it, it is good to keep track of what your opponent is doing if you can. Um, just seeing that he's rallying more longbows lets you know he's going to be keeping aggressive here. Uh, with the recent patch that came out, you could mess with horsemen um, instead of three archery ranges. But personally, I haven't messed with that yet. I am a pretty big fan of the three archery ranges just from games I've practiced with other people. Um, and for my own experiences so far as it just it feels really strong of course if English decides to do a horseman switch you're gonna need spears or something yourself um, but I that's honestly super 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 rare and I haven't seen that much yet though that might change in the future who knows um, as you can see he's just poking around he can't poke around this wood line because it's blocked um, he is able to kind of take out some of these deer, which kind of makes the second TC a little town center more useless in a way, because uh, it can't protect these deer or me from gathering from these deer, though I can gather from these fine, these three. And then as you can see, we're just pumping out our archers. We have a third archery range coming down. We're mainly focusing on wood production right now because we want to be able to, to sustain three <coughs> uh, archery range production. Um, and then from here, we are going to get back on gold somewhat soon, uh, as once we get a stable three archery range production going where I, we're not going idle, we can start adding a little bit more gold and then a blacksmith to get blacksmith upgrades. Because blacksmith up upgrades are important. Getting the archery range attack and the defense is uh, very crucial. And as you can see, he has about 11 archers right here. We have six. Again, there's no reason to push out right now. Uh, and that's, I'm going to just reiterate that again, that patience against English aggression is very key to the, to not taking a lot of damage. Um, it's annoying what, what they're doing, of course, coming around, sniping villagers or trying to snipe villagers. But you have to remember, we have the villager lead because we have two town centers producing. Um, so even losing a few villagers here and there isn't the end of the world. Now, of course, if you can avoid it, you're going to avoid it, but sometimes you can't. Like we lost a villager there. We forgot we had one on berries. It happens. 
Um, but we're getting closer and closer to a pretty good mass of archers where I'm going to feel comfortable to start engaging. Um, a good, so a good way to do this from here is you can try to engage the main force if you think you have an advantage, but it's not a bad idea to come up here and snipe some reinforcements, force him to retreat, or even go all the way to his base and snipe some villagers. Uh, again, we're very, we have a very good defensive posture here. He can't harass these archers because of the town centers. And um, if we left our archers here, unless he's doing a ram push, which then I wouldn't recommend doing, uh, there's not much he can do to really pressure me at this point. Um, and also, since we've gotten to that point in the game, we can even put another outpost down here to protect our uh, these berries because he could sweep around and harass them. And then as you can see, we got villagers back on gold. We have a healthy archery range production, and now we're going to get blacksmith upgrades. Um, and now obviously, again, you do want to keep track of the English player, which I didn't do a very good job of doing. Um, I mean, I saw him keep pushing, and I saw this, which means he has an outpost somewhere nearby. So I knew he was being aggressive, so I wasn't worried about Castle Age coming. Uh, so I, that is one reason why my scouting this game didn't matter because I knew I saw how aggressive he was being. But if I didn't see units or anything, you definitely want to keep track of what your opponent is doing. Um, now, as you can see here, we kind of push. We see he has 23 archers and we have 22, so we're pretty even. Uh, obviously, he has the advantage because he's going to have more because uh, longbowmen are stronger and the network of castles. So we safely pull away. It's too early to engage. Um, and especially with that Narrowcrate Castle bonus, which allows them to attack 25% faster, there's no point in engaging. Because um, we don't want to trade uh, inefficiently. Um, like, yes, it, it may be helpful, but it's just it's not a good idea. You don't want to let the Longbow Mass spiral out, of, spiral out of control. If it does, it can become very hard to come back from that situation. And then we kill some more archers here. Um, he's just keeping an eye on us with his scout. He secured this section. But we're getting closer and closer um, to wanting to attack. You can see we, we're making this gate so that we can run out, start sniping some reinforcements, um, and then take out this is the primary my primary goal. Um, I actually wouldn't have hated if I just grabbed this force and ran all the way to his base. Uh, I think either option is completely fine. Um, and now here you're going to notice that I spread my archers in the lion formation. Uh, this is just a spread overkill. Um, by default, when you attack move, your archers will overkill a lot. Like all 31 will shoot one archer. Um, with line spread, it makes it a little bit more, um, spreads the damage a little bit more. Although it does still do quite a bit of overkill. So sometimes there's some micro that you want to do. But as you can see, his main force is back here. We're pushing him all the way back to his base. Uh, his reinforcements are in... You know, he's lost probably seven longbows at this point, eight longbows. Uh, and then from here, we decide, okay, let's pull back. We could have tried harassing his wood line, which I'm going to assume is right here. Um, but I decided, since we got rid of his reinforcements, we can go for his main force now. We take out his main force, and we just kind of win the game here, because it's very difficult for him to get that back up. Um, we do see he has the blacksmith upgrades. Um, we have ours coming in. We have our attack already, and we're about to have our armor. And then from here, uh, it's the game is really in our favor here. Uh, he just did not do enough damage. And the best case scenario for him right now would be to take a, a trade here. But that would favor me at this point because we have a much better economy. I can transfer villagers off wood if I wanted to and try going for castle. Um, but still, there is this network of castles that we don't want to deal with. So what I end up doing, you see we have a bunch of archers here. I make a, I make a battering ram. I'm going to clean this out here. And then I was going to go attack his base. And then as you can see, he's got 29 archers. We have more than that. We have 42 because we just have the production and a much better economy. Um, this game's pretty much over at this point. Once he loses this mass... I have I can go attack him and most and even if I can't kill him, I can force him not to go castle because of these army the, these units, and then I can uh, go from there. As we can see, he GG'd here. The game's over. Not much he can do. Um, and this is kind of a game I wanted to go over so that you can see a way to go two town centers versus English, and uh, and survive. 
Again, the key points to this build are definitely the outpost placement. If you place the tower in a bad position um, where it doesn't defend much, even with the arrow slits upgrade, uh, you're going to just die. Uh, walling is also very important with this build because you need to wall certain sections so that your opponent can't easily harass certain areas. Uh, like I said, you want to keep your food secure if you can, your wood line, and so on. Uh, it's going to take practice, and even I still need some more practice with my uh, tower placement. Sometimes I place a bad tower and I'm like, I don't know why I placed it there, and then I can lose a game that way. Um, but this is the two town center version. Um, I did talk about the other version where you can go one town center, um, but I don't have any examples of that at this time, but you can see it from other streams. Like I think Kasva is a player who likes to do the one town centers, horseman archer or horseman spear even. Um, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys on the next one.